very good morning once again i can't help it you know people want me to do this i have no time to do anything else because every time i am expected to do this i am expected to do that i really don't know what to do i have no time for my own self you know my son uh, he just cannot do anything without me all the time he keeps insisting that i should be there you know i can't leave him alone and do anything my husband you know well, the, whenever he comes from office he wants me to be there and there are a lot of things which he expects me to do and if i don't do it he gets upset he doesn't scold as such but uh, you know i can make out from his body language that he is not very happy so i i can't i'm sorry ha huh? i can't come and spend time with you because i have to be there for my husband have you heard statements like these every now and then from people that i cannot do anything for myself i cannot spend time in doing what i like to do i have to make so many sacrifices why because there is somebody who expects me to do it just because the person expects you to do it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it there is a difference no it's like i always tell somebody who says uh, you know i want something but i'm not sure whether the other person will agree or not so what do i tell that person ask even jesus christ said ask and it shall be given unto thee isn't it i find it no so sad that some people don't take the trouble of asking and yet they lament saying that i don't know whether the other person will give or not i don't know whether the other person will oblige i wanted to go out you know my friends are meeting after such a long time and they've been telling me you come but i don't know i think my husband will get upset you know he doesn't like me going out with the uh friend so i thought is better not to unnecessarily make things unpleasant so i didn't uh, ask i told my friend sorry i can't come with uh, you so many times it happens one of the best uh, incidents that happened i will never forget that years ago one of my students who had completed the dcs course and had moved on one day unexpectedly she walked in and i said oh it's good you come because 5 minutes later if you had come i would have gone to the class then i wouldn't have been available i haven't met you since a long time so it's good that you came i can spend 5 minutes with you before i go to class so she said oh you have a class what is the topic i told her this is the topic and she said oh that's such a wonderful topic can i sit through in the class i said yeah you are our old student come i don't mind uh, you know you come and sit but she said no my daughter is alone at home i been out you know i went shopping i went to the tailor i went here there finished everything and came back and i am on my way home i been away for such a long time i think she will be needing me i think i should go home i said yes your daughter is more important please go no but i want to attend the lecture i said then please attend no but if she needs me she'll get very upset i said there's a thing called a telephone make a call to her right now and ask her do you need me or you don't need me and tell her why you are saying it because there's a good lecture and i want to attend it but you are my priority if you really need me for something say so i will leave the lecture and come that's all she picked up the phone and she started saying you know when i went to the tailor i gave you a dress for <laughs> stitching i also got you that brand of biscuits you wanted no i had to go to two different shops and look for it but i finally got it for you i have done this i have done that i have done everything and i'm on my way back you know i was coming back i just stopped uh, i'll stop by for a few minutes at banjara so i stopped by and there's this wonderful lecture on such and such topic it is so tempting uh is it okay if i don't come and if i attend that lecture and come later you know what the daughter said thank you mummy a teenage daughter was left the whole afternoon alone in the house it must have been such a great celebration as long as the fridge is full of <coughs> things that she wants to eat she wants absolutely nothing else in a way it's good she says that mummy is out so i have the house to myself i can chill out i can do whatever i want i can put on loud music 
I can uh, use the worst of slangs and talk to my uh, friends. I can call up my boyfriend, whatever it may be. But you see, why I told you this was to help you to understand that sometimes we think that we have to abide by the expectations of other people. I used to see this uh, little poster long back in many of the shops. You also must have seen it. It says that, uh, uh, you know, you ask for credit. I no give credit. You get mad. Then after a space, it says, I give credit. You no pay. I get mad. Then again, space. Better you get mad. So I oblige you, you ask for credit, I oblige you, I give you credit, then you don't pay, then I get upset. Instead of that, it's better you get upset. Because I never said that I owe you some credit or something like that, no? So I, I have a policy, I don't give credit. If you're going to get mad, you better get mad. At least I'm saving myself from financial losses. This is how it uh, uh, goes. Day in and day out. We face people. And uh, let me tell you this very uh, uh, clearly that uh, you know, there are a lot of people around us, maybe good people, nice uh, uh, people otherwise, but who have this habit of leaning on others, trying to dump their work, their responsibilities onto others and trying to make the other person feel that you should do this for me. And they use this wonderful tool called guilt. They make you feel guilty if you don't do it. They start off with, okay, go ahead, spend time with your friends, have a nice time. How does it matter to you what happens to me anyway? I'm so sick or I'm so old or I am this. What can I do? It's okay. No, no, no. Don't worry about me. Whatever happens to me, why should you bother? No. It's okay, you want to enjoy with your friends. I want you to enjoy. Come on, go ahead. What is the worst that can happen to me? Don't worry about it. You see the tone of the thing? Yes, Surekha, you're asking how do we rid ourselves of the compulsion within us to want to please others? That's the whole theme of today's talk. But I'll come to that in a few minutes after I start off with you know, defining what and how it happens. Let me uh, present it to you with a real life uh, study. There was this gentleman who was around 50, uh, early 50s. He came to me and he said, whatever I do in life, I'm not satisfied. I always feel have that uneasy feeling. I have this feeling that I have not achieved. I have not done anything great. I should have done better. And he went on and on with that. I said, OK, first tell me everything about yourself, right from your childhood and all. So he said that uh, we uh, lost our father at a very early age, me and my elder brother. The difference is just one and a half years. Both of us were the only uh, people. We were small children when our father passed away. Our mother had the burden of bringing us up alone. She really struggled. She had to really put in a lot of hard work, but she ensured that both of us got good education. Both of us went to good institutions. Both of us got good degrees. And both of us are today doing extremely well in our education. Then I got married. I have a wonderful wife. Very, very compatible. Very adjusting. Very nice. I consider myself extremely lucky that I've got a life partner like that. I've got a couple of children who have grown up very well, who are doing well in uh, life or on their way to making their future very responsible, I must say, for their age and very nice behavior, academics, everything is uh, uh, fine. And recently, I also built my own house. You know, I had this dream of having my own house. I used to live in apartments and company accommodation. I wanted to have an independent house with a lawn and my own place. I managed to do that also. I have done uh, that. I have put away enough money as a retirement fund. Even if something happens to me, I've got insurance. Like that, he went on and on saying all positive things about himself. And yet he says, I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. OK, so I prodded a little deeper. And slowly what came out was he dotes on his mother. I told you, no, the mother single handedly brought up these two boys, gave them a good education, struggled and everything. So now he feels so obliged to his mother that whatever he does has to be 
you know, to the standard and to the satisfaction of his mother. He's got a wonderful wife, he's got children, he's got other loved ones in his life. They're all non-existent for him. Anything and everything he does, he has to do it to please his uh, uh, mother. And this happened in childhood. From childhood, he's been like that. And interestingly, his elder brother has always been an achiever. So the mother, without realizing it, those days we didn't have this child and adolescent development programs or any of those things. No, So the poor mother, she was so busy bringing up the uh, children and working hard. What she would do is she would keep telling this fellow, see, your elder brother is doing this. How many marks you uh, got? Ma, I got 82 percent. Yes, but your elder brother got 86. So you must do better, isn't it? Anything like that. Mama, I got uh, selected in the you know basketball team of the class. Of the class? Your brother in the school team. Yeah? What do you mean class? You should aim for the school team. You get my point? Starting from small things like that, it went on and on and on. To the extent that whatever may be the intentions or ignorance of the old lady, when he finally made his dream house, in that what he did was that he asked his mother, I want to have a separate room for you, Mama, whenever you are with us. I want to see to it that this room is exclusively for yourself. So I will design it, I will color it, I will stock it up in whatever manner you want it so that this will be permanently your room. You can stay here whatever duration, whenever you feel like you could just walk in without any other uh, this thing. Your clothes will be here, everything will be here. He had done, gone to that extent and then he had built his house. When she came, when the house was completed and she had a look, she went up and down, he took her around, showed everything. She said, very good, very nice and all that. But then she started off. You know, your uh, drawing room, the uh, house which your brother made, that drawing room has a better ventilation. You know, this doesn't look so bright. You know, this bathroom, your brother made the bathroom in such a way that it is so comfortable. This bathroom doesn't seem to be like that. Anything and everything, again, 50 years later, she is still comparing his achievement and his uh, work with his brothers. And all his joy of having built that house is gone. You understand why I gave you this example? Because if you decide that I have to please, this is my mother. I am not saying he should not be loving, respecting, obliging his mother. But to try and make her happy when she's the type of person who is not happy for whatever reason, she seems to feel that the elder son has done much more. So be it. I am your son. I love you. I respect you. I care for you. I will do whatever I can within my limits. It took a very long time to counsel him and to wean him off from his mother. That is why I gave you this example to show you. That's an extreme case, but this is how it uh, happens. The other reason why we have this uh, you know, compulsion of wanting to please uh, others could be because I'm not assertive. If I become a passive person, if I have low self-esteem, you know, I feel incomplete within myself. That is the time when we start thinking that unless and until I get the appreciation, recognition, and praise from A, B, C, the important people. I only define who are those important people for whatever the reason. I want this person to be happy. I want that person to say this uh, uh, to me. Only when I get that, then it is fulfilled. Now, you know what happens to the other person? The other person's expectations keep going up. Whatever I do, the person takes it for granted. Yes, yes, this much you are doing. Now I want more. It is like that. Uh, we were just discussing about how thousands of uh, uh, children this year in PUC, second PUC, uh, they got 600 out of 600, 100 percent, you know, as though they are so perfect that there is no scope for any improvement. They have in all six subjects, they've got 100 out of uh, uh, 100. And that was reminding me of those good old days when children used to go to school and give their exams and get their report. 
and again in the report the teacher has to write her comments and so many teachers i know used to write can do better first term he gets 58% she writes can do better second term he gets 67% she writes can do better third term he gets 81% she writes can do better so i was just thinking how many teachers there are who out of force of habit the student has got 600 out of 600 and she will say can do better now that is in a light hearted manner i'm saying but it is actually true that the more you keep obliging this so called important person the more his or her expectations go up keep that in uh, uh, mind and then what happens is we develop this feeling i don't want to hurt this person she's my mother she's my only parent she has brought me up how can i hurt her yes i'm not asking you to hurt her but if she has got unreasonable expectations if she is asking you to do things which are not fitting into your schedule or which are going beyond what uh, you can then definitely you know you have to and if she chooses to get hurt because of that it is her problem and not yours then comes another very interesting thing people who feel insecure it didn't happen in the case of this particular lady but i have also seen some mothers let us say who are alone who don't have a life partner who have a child or uh, children what they do is they start feeling insecure they feel if i don't express my needs and wants if i don't express my fears if i don't you know keep drilling it into my child that i am alone i am lonely i am old i have need you i can't do without you if they don't do that then i get this fear that my son will not look after me the moment they see the son is loving his wife very much spending time with her doing all sorts of things for her this person starts feeling insecure i'm just giving that as an example it could be a man it could be a woman it could be gender can be different relationship can be different but i'm just giving an example of how there are some people who start thinking that i am going to be left out of this whole thing the person whom i am little dependent on is now you not know, drifting his attention away from me he is obliging his wife his children or whatever whoever else uh, it is and because of that i don't want to lose out and then they start with talking about you know how i am miserable how nobody cares for me how i am lonely the whole family wants to go for a picnic and they planned it out for days together and they are telling the grandmother you also come with us she said no i am too old i won't be able to walk those long distances in the place that you are going i don't necessarily hold you people back you go ahead no ji we want you come on you come with us no 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 i am perfectly okay you know that maid servant is there and then the lunch has been cooked everything is there so i will relax in fact i want to just sit back relax watch that old tv serial and then catch a nap in the afternoon so i am very comfortable go come back at your own time all that she says so they've gotten up early on that sunday morning and they're all getting ready to go and that is when she starts getting palpitations she has high blood pressure she starts getting breathless and suddenly the whole family comes to her what has happened and she starts saying no no don't worry don't worry you people go nothing will happen at my age even if i die how does it matter ah, why are you talking about dying and no 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 it's okay i have a weak heart you know that no anything can happen but you people enjoy yourself i don't stay back for me that's the end of the picnic so there, what i am saying is i'll come to that in a minute there are always ways and means of obliging the people who are important to you whom you love whom you regard whom you respect but do not allow them to develop the type of expectations which will bind you down which will make you miserable and let me tell you even the relationship gets uh, uh, spoiled and many of us who are nice soft caring people they start actually thinking that i am not allowed to do what i want i started off with making some of those statements which people make no 
no no no i can't do it no my family needs me my children need me my spouse you no know, feels very lost when i am not there so i have to do this it is like you know developing that uh, you know feeling of uh, you know omnipotence only i can uh, do it nobody else can do this only i have to oblige these people it happens in offices where people are, are dumped and overloaded with work and they are made to feel that you are the only person who can do this work if you don't do it nobody else can do it so therefore you sit for hours and hours and do it and we are going to go ahead and enjoy our uh, uh, selves so when that happens i become my worst enemy i am the one who has been washing myself saying i am the only person who can do this work in the office i am the only person who can run this uh, household i am the only person who can take care of my uh, uh, children when i do that people inevitably have higher and higher and higher expectations and they start you know manipulating me literally they take it for uh, granted yes navina i'll answer your question how to balance between obliging and not creating too much expectation that is what is the underlying theme of what i'm going to talk about today i'll just come to that in a minute one more important point before we go towards what we need to do to answer questions like navinas and even surekha's earlier that we need to remove past baggage that's a very important part of the whole change process earlier i had done this once you know when my mother was not well i left my family my children and went away for so many days when i came back i came to know that my son has failed in the unit test and my son and daughter have had big fights and the, the house is not been clean it was such a bad experience that tomorrow anything happens i am not going to leave them and go my mother is extremely important to me she is critically ill also but i will not go because these people cannot do without me so maybe it happened that time maybe you learned a lesson maybe your children are little more grown and responsible maybe you can set certain three conditions and norms for them before you go there are so many ways of doing it but that i can do only if i get rid of my old baggage and say that okay that has been a learning exercise now i am not going to oblige and go into these expectations from uh, people lastly please remember i always keep saying that marriage differs from all other relationships in two ways one is sex and the other is expectations so that i feel is one of the worst expectations which sometimes can even destroy a relationship expectations of the fact that my partner should be ideal god has selected him or her and given to me the horoscope said that it is uttama 10 out of 10 it is matching perfectly we got married on the most auspicious day of the year so all the blessings from heaven should come to us and therefore the expectation goes up and the other person may not be willing to oblige keeping these things in uh, mind let us uh, start working on how do we actually deal with uh, the uh, fact that others have high or unreasonable expectations from me and how do i deal with it so sapna's question how do i uh, remove past baggage easier said than done yes sapna every topic that i take up no is difficult if it is easy you don't need me to sit here and give you a bhashan and you don't have to spoil one hour of your saturday morning sitting and listening to me right these are difficult things i don't deny that but unless you accept it and say it may be difficult but it is not impossible and it is important to me this is a part of my healing growing adapting uh, uh, process if that is the case then i will make the efforts so starting with uh, you know how do i uh, uh, remove past baggage do not allow those uh, rationalize those experiences see last time when i went i did not make this 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 arrangement 
I went at a time when my son had his unit test and particularly maths, which he is very weak in. I did not make any alternative arrangements for somebody to come and at least give him a little bit of coaching and guidance. I should have done that before I left. So in that way, it would have obliged. I should have set some target for him so that I can call up from my mommy's house and check every day. I had given you this timetable. Have you done that? I didn't do all that. So I'm not going to get pulled down by the fact that last time when I left my family and went away, there was so much of chaos. That past baggage has to be removed by rationalizing and making uh, you know, amends for whatever uh, um, happened. Last time the food was bad and the maid servant you know, disappeared exactly at the time when I was not there. So there was nobody to cook. So can I make alternative arrangements? There are these lovely people who give homemade uh, food. I will tell them for the next 10 days, every day, send it if in the, to my uh, uh, house. Let these people eat that food, which is also homemade and which is healthy and everything. But it is different from my own. And I have to tell them that, please, you cannot expect ideal food. It will be good food, but it will not be uh, ideal. The other, second step, most important um, step is when somebody has high expectation, no? No, I can't do this. How can you go away to your mother's house? How can you leave me and go? How can you not do this work? You know, you are the only one in the office who can do it. Whenever somebody starts off with that, no. First thing is listen to the person. Oh, what do you feel about that? And ask probing and pointed questions. About food, you said that uh, you will have a lot of difficulty. Uh, what are the options that you have thought of? Do you feel that that tiffin which is coming from the nearby lady, uh, do you think that is not good? In what way? What are the things uh, uh, you think? Oh, she does not make good chapatis, is it? What about her rice? How is uh, that? The more you probe, the more the other person gets jittery. And earlier, the person was just going on making general remarks. How can you leave me and go away? Now, when you show that you are making these arrangements, it becomes very difficult for the person. In that, what you do is, where you feel that the expectations are reasonable, go ahead and oblige. Say that I'm making this, this, this arrangement. I'm cooking this food and keeping a stock for four days in the deep freezer. So at least for these four days, you will have this. That much I can do. But I'm away for eight days. The next four days, you will have to get fresh food. You'll have to get from outside. You'll have to cook. So this much I can oblige. That is what, you know, Try to have a compromise in these sort of things and equally important, suggest alternatives to the person. So Mr. Rao also is an expert in accounts. So since I am very tired and I've been working very hard this week, I need the weekend to myself. Uh, can we see whether Mr. Rao will be able to do it? Could you request him to do it in my place? Or instead of now, since I need the weekend, I promise my uh, family, can I come on Monday a little early and start off with the things so I'll see to it that as much as possible we can cover. So go on exploring and suggesting um, alternatives. The other very interesting thing, when somebody is going on and on asking you to oblige in something, ask him for a favor in return. Okay, you want me to stay back and do this, you want me to cook, you want me to uh, do this extra accounts work. Can I request you to do this, this, this for me? Either the person runs away because he doesn't want to oblige you. Or even when you are doing something which you really don't want to, you are getting something which you would not have otherwise got from that uh, um, person. One more area is of this is to try and get a buddy, you know, somebody who is there with you, who can stand by you, who can tell you, that is this reasonable? Sometimes that's guilt factor. I told you, no, I start feeling guilty. Am I, uh, you know, by not obliging, am I doing the wrong thing? Am I, uh, you know, uh, uh, being bad to that person? Am I being nasty? Am I being selfish? These are the thoughts that come. So if you have a buddy who is neutral and who keeps giving you nice, uh, uh, you know, rational feedback, then you know that you are not being unreasonable in that uh, bargain. And if really things go so bad, if there is a person whose demands are so much that you just cannot oblige, you feel whatever you made all the efforts, but this person is so unreasonable in his or her expectations, 
then get ready for a confrontation, get ready to move off from that relationship, get ready for whatever confrontation and conflict and breakups that have to happen. It is far better to give up rather than to go on and on and on struggling. Okay. So with that, what is the time now? The time for a quick break. My hot tea has come. I will have that. And just for a minute, I will request uh, Seema to come and give you a quick update on what's happening here in Banjara. By the time, put all your questions on the chat box. Yes, Ali, you were talking about expectations and you were talking about a buddy, a buddy who can be with you, can help you to reflect, introspect. So much baggage, so much expectation, so many things to think about. So if you need a buddy, our team is here, team of trained counselors. Anytime you want to come and, uh, you know, help to understand, uh, you know, if there is any baggage or if anything which is unresolved, you want to work on that. We are always available and please come, uh, you know, uh, as uh, our counseling sessions are absolutely free also. And you can come and just spend some time here and uh, uh, probably you yourself will know the difference. And uh, also, uh, you know, if you want to uh, help others, you have been able to resolve your issues. You found that these are, uh, you know, counseling sessions have been effective. And now you want to learn the skills of counseling. You want to be there for the other person. We have this wonderful program called Diploma in Counseling Skills. Admissions are on right now. Two teams have started. We just uh, recently did our uh, soft inauguration for a weekend and a week uh, day batch. And uh, it is, again, a pleasure to have students come here, so, you know, starting like I was telling you last time also with a self-introspection uh, exercise and counseling sessions and a lot of stuff happening here. So any more information you know want to know about this program to become a professionally trained counselor, please get in touch with us, right? And uh, here in Banjara, we keep on upskilling. So we don't stop at this, you know, people call up and ask which program uh, is available. I, so first we, you know, try to find out what is it that you want. There are many counselors who are already into counseling here. This is the 23rd year uh, of, uh, you know, uh, counseling uh, training that is given in Banjara. So now what next? You have to keep upskilling yourself even as a counselor. For all the counselors who are trained here in the last 22 years, uh, we have come up with this um, CBT program, Cognitive Behavior Therapy. Uh, you know, so this is for already trained counselors who are counseling. To start off with, we are starting with this batch of 20 uh, students because we just want that inclusive, uh, you know, group and participation and all of that. But uh, we, if you are interested, just get in touch and I'll tell you more about it. We will definitely do a repeat of this program also. Already the seats are filling up uh, fast. So, uh, you know, so many such programs of upskilling yourself. It's a lifelong uh, process to keep learning about human behavior, whether it is your own self or reaching out to others. So please reach out to us and uh, we'll help you to decide what could be good for you. So over to Ali. Ah. Navina's question is very nice. How to balance between obliging and not creating too much expectation? One of the ways of doing that is what I mentioned to you. Get something back in return. Tell the person I'm willing to do this. Uh, can you also help me in that, that, that? Don't make it sound like a precondition, but just gently bring that in. Yeah, actually, I was very caught up with this. I had to do that banking work, which I was expecting that I finish it off this weekend. Can you do one thing? Can you take care of the banking work? I'll explain what needs to be done. If you can uh, do that, that will be a big relief. I can focus on this work, which you are asking me to do. So whether it's a child, whether it's a spouse, whether it's an office related uh, person, 
as long as you uh, you know ask uh, something in um, uh, return you will be able to uh, you know uh, make sure that there is a limitation to the thing surika says how can i be my best uh, buddy by expecting realistically from uh, myself okay yes you have to become your best buddy by listing out your strengths and weaknesses what am i capable of doing and what am i not capable of uh, doing what are my limitations which cannot be overcome and what are my limitations which can be overcome always learn to differentiate between these two today i have a limitation that i cannot do public speaking but is it a permanent disability or something no it isn't all i have to do is to learn the right ways practice and very soon i also can become a good uh, speaker on the other hand there may be certain limitations which are much more compelling i can get a better career if i move take a transfer and go to such and such city but my elderly parents need me that is my priority so as long as my parents need me i am not going to move out from this city so that's a limitation to my uh, career but it doesn't matter at the same time since we are talking about uh, um, uh, expectations if my parents are hale and hearty healthy they keep going for shopping trips to dubai and uh, you know enjoying themselves in america where their son in law takes them around they are capable of doing all that but when i say that uh, you know can i move to chennai i'm just 6 hours away and i can uh, take care of you and i can visit frequently and they start moaning and groaning and say if you go away who will take care of us that is when you have to draw the line and tell yourself that let's be you can even if you feel and if the situation is acceptable say would you like to come to chennai i'll get a bigger house there so that you'll have a separate uh, bedroom and you can have all your needs met so why don't you come with me to chennai now if those parents are reasonable and if they say that yes we genuinely need our son or daughter to be uh, with us uh, you know to take care of our needs they would be willing to make that little sacrifice and say okay we'll come to chennai at least for the time being we'll try it out and see if you're not happy then we'll come back to the city or you know those sort of uh, uh, things you need to understand and that is how you create that habit of balancing okay Vinita says, "I just want to understand, like, how, where do we draw a line? Please correct me, as you mentioned earlier, that any relationship expectations are there. It gets really difficult at times as we can manage ours, but managing others' expectations is very challenging." Yes, Vinita, that's the whole idea of why I came out with this uh, uh, topic, because it is not that easy. Particularly if we have people, I told you, you know, sometimes we may have people who knowingly or unknowingly become manipulative. it could be because of their sense of insecurity i told you there may be an elderly lady who says that my husband is not there i am not keeping good health and even if my son and daughter in law don't take care of me then what will happen to me so it could be somebody like that it could be somebody who wants to grab on and get your uh, attention it could be for whatever reasons that a person uh, feels that this is the right way of doing uh, uh, things that's their problem remember that you are there to take care of genuine needs like the example i just uh, gave just now if my parents are really old if there could be a medical emergency where the person has to be taken care of immediately then i will not leave them in the go but if that is not the case thinking that something may happen my parents are in their 60s they are fit and fine and healthy so i don't really think that uh, you know i have to be there 24 by 7 i could also make arrangements i can ask one of these medical trusts and these people make them members of some senior citizens uh, scheme so that even in the middle of the night they have an emergency they make one phone call and the ambulance or the doctor comes so i'm taking care of all those things there are always ways and means of fulfilling that's one of the points that i said no look for alternatives okay how uh, good is it to break a relationship and expectations become more and marry someone else and what if it repeats yeah when i said break a relationship or keep away i didn't uh, um, you know mean something as extreme as divorce but 
you can start off. See, sometimes we tend to think only in terms of black and white. Either I have to suffer the rest of my life with this pause or I must diverse and I must get out. Please explore all possible options within that, between these two. It is possible in many, many cases I have seen that without taking a drastic step either to this extreme or that extreme, you can find some path which is in the middle. Okay. Now, if you find that, no, this just cannot happen and you move away. Then the, uh, this question is uh, very uh, relevant. You separate diverse, you marry someone else and it repeats. I've seen that happening also. These are what we refer to as relationship on the rebound. I am unhappy, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm stifled in this marriage. So the only thought that keeps coming to me is how can I get out? As soon as I get out, I will be a free bird and I will have everything according to me. I get out. Finally, it is done. I am separated, divorced. I am a free bird. Then what happens? I start feeling lonely. So many things happen. Friends who are couples, they stop uh, including me in their activities. So many people start looking at me suspiciously. Some people put me down. I get uh, uh, you know, scared for my physical security because maybe I'm living alone. When that happens, what do I do? I want to grab on to another relationship as fast as I can. So on the rebound, I find somebody who seems to be charming or who seems to be attractive and I jump into that relationship. And yes, it does happen that it repeats. But any wise, rational, mature person will say, once bitten, twice shy. So now that I know what it means to be in a bad relationship, I will calmly, systematically sit down and list out what happened in that relationship. What were the other person's expectations? What were my expectations? Where did we fail each other? Please remember, I'm using the words each other. It is very, very, very rare where a relationship has, is totally 100% one-sided. One person is perfect and the other person is the most horrible person. Even if one person is 80% wrong, the other person still contributes 20% to whatever has gone wrong. So now that you are out of that relationship, you focus on the 20% where you made mistakes. Maybe your expectation was very high. I told you we get into marriage thinking that my Prince Charming will come and he'll sweep me off my feet and then I'll live happily ever after. And when that didn't happen, I started getting very frustrated. So what was my contribution towards this breakup so that I don't repeat it? What are the factors which led to this you know, total uh, breakup or uh, uh, burnout? Let me be very clear that those factors should not come in uh, again. I have had one case of a girl whose father was a chronic alcoholic and used to beat up the wife and even beat up this child. When she grew up, she thought the only solution to my uh, all that I'm suffering from my father is to get married. And then, you know, I will live happily ever after. And she meets this person who is a social drinker, who tells her, as soon as I get married to you, I will stop drinking because I'm alone. I'm lonely. I have nobody. That is the reason why I'm drinking. The moment I get somebody as wonderful as you, there's no need for drink. I don't know whether he's trying to fool her, but she is definitely fooling herself by believing him. If he is drinking, he's drinking. Full stop. She gets married to the film. He turns out to be an alcoholic. He gives her as much trouble as his father was, as her father was giving to her mother. With great difficulty, she comes out of that marriage. She's again alone. She's again frustrated. She thinks nobody cares for me. I'm going to be lonely in my old age. She starts drifting towards a relationship and forms a relationship with whom, you know, an alcoholic. This particular case, this lady came to me when she was in her fourth relationship, all four with alcoholics. 
and all four had you know uh, convinced her that i am a social drinker i will give up any day and she believed them because one of the things that we try to do which we should never do is try to be a savior in a close relationship you cannot be a savior to your spouse your parent or somebody who is as close as that you can take the person for help to somebody else who can help but i cannot if my father is an alcoholic if my mother suffers from extreme bouts of uncontrollable anger and gets into trouble with everybody if my spouse has certain very very unreasonable and irritating habits i cannot be that savior to pull that person out always keep that in the uh, ha ah, noor is asking a very nice question can we ignore irrational expectations and move on in our life the answer is a very vehement and very clear no by i'll tell you anything that starts off in a small manner slowly grows so the moment you have identified that i am the victim of irrational expectations i need to nip it in the bud i'm not saying nipping in the bud by taking a divorce or running away from home or cut, uh, leaving that job or whatever i'm just saying start working towards overcoming it don't say it is very minor i can tolerate it it's okay otherwise he's a good human being no this i've heard from so many wives who say my husband does the most horrible things he comes back home drunk he creates a ruckus the neighbors look down upon us he is violent with me he throws up all over the place he runs into debt he does all these things but you know ali basically he is a very good human being it's only when he is drunk that he does this that reminds me of the great old movie shole amitabh bachchan goes to hema malini's moshi and says that you know will you marry hema malini to my friend uh, dharmender and the old lady asked does she does he have any bad habits he said no absolutely no bad habits ek hi aadat hai moshi wo ilaichi khata hai और इलायची काडम काडम इलायची खाता है हां व्हाट्स सो बैड अबाउट ईटिंग इलायची परफेक्टली ओके नहीं 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 मौशी वो हमेशा नहीं खाता है इलायची जब वो चाय पीता है ना चाय पीने की बहुत आदत है तो जब भी चाय पीता है तो वो इलायची खाता है बहुत चाय पीता है वो ओके सो ही इज गॉट दिस हैबिट ऑफ ड्रिंकिंग टू मच टी नथिंग रॉन्ग विद इट नो लॉट ऑफ पीपल एंजॉय टी कोई बात नहीं बेटा नहीं 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 ना मौशी वो हमेशा चाय नहीं पीता वो वो जब सिगरेट पीता है ना जब भी उसको चाय की तलब लगती है वेन एवर ही हैज अ सिगरेट देन ओनली हैज टी ऐसा क्या बेटा वो सिगरेट भी पीता है ठीक है आजकल के नौजवान बच्चे बहुत लोग सिगरेट पीते हैं अच्छी आदत नहीं है कोशिश करेंगे उसको छुड़ाने की लेकिन ओके okay, कोई बात नहीं नाई माशी वो सिगरेट हमेशा नहीं पीता है वो जब भी शराब पीता है ना वेन ही हैज एल्कोहल देन ओनली हैज अ सिगरेट सो दैट्स ऑफ द होल स्टोरी गोज एंड दैट was a personification it was an over dramatization but it actually depicted reality this is what happens if a person tries to say that i drink because i am alone i live away from my family i have nobody so i come back to an empty house and that is why i get drunk but once i have this wonderful girl as my life partner i will never drink he's fooling himself more than he's fooling anybody else and if this girl believes him and gets into that relationship or that marriage she is going in with unrealistic expectations unrealistic expectations can also be by very good human beings people who are willing to make sacrifices people who are willing to adjust but what's the point in going on adjusting and that is why i answered to noor that you should not ignore irrational expectations and try to move on Okay, Tanmay says expectation in a relationship should be both ways. 
always it can't be fulfilling others expectation another person always fails our expectation what to do in such a uh, case yes ideally it should be done in both ways but in reality does it happen to the extreme i always tell people i ask them why should you be loved and they say because i love everybody so they should love me no it doesn't work uh, that it keep it in the mind that just because you are obliging or you have a, very reasonable or low expectations automatically don't expect the other person to have low expectations so while i agree that it has to be two way but if the other person does not have it or he fails into your expectations you have to immediately start working on it that's why i told no that do not neglect start off at the earliest once you have identified this person is important to me this person is part of my life and i have certain expectations which are going to ensure that we lead a harmonious uh, life but i am not getting it i should do something to work towards uh, uh, that the earlier i start the better it is and when you start earlier no when the gap between your expectations and the other person's behavior is not too large you start with being reasonable being polite being warm if things go out of context if you ignore 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 at one point it goes out of context even when you are trying to set it right it comes out in a very aggressive or a very violent manner you never listen to me so many years i have suffered you never care for this how much of time how many times you have done this 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 to me at that time it becomes much more difficult because you are attacking that person nobody wants to be attacked and then the person becomes defensive he tries to throw the ball back in your court by saying but you have also done these horrible things don't you understand that and then it becomes a ping pong battle and that is why i said that uh, you know, this happens and it can also lead to what nur has put up just now that too much expectation leads to dejection and pain remember that now how do you define too much it depends on what the other person can give you take the example of a uh, child you have a 15 year old child and you are having a severe headache you can give money to the child and say go down to the pharmacy down the road and buy me a painkiller and come back it's a very normal expectation as a parent that i have this grown up child and i cannot get up and go because i'm having a severe headache i'm doing it now would you have the same expectation from a 5 year old if your child is 5 years old will you say go to the uh, pharmacy shop cross the road uh, give this money get the uh, medicine you will not do it so that is what i'm saying expectation should be based on like what i told you in the beginning what the other person is capable of giving and what the other person is not capable of giving right and as as we expect more from those whom we love because we too are ready to go that extra mile for them we can let go of people whom we don't care for yes agreed i definitely agree uh, uh, with you but that is what i'm saying the closer the relationship the harder you have to work on it relationships are like a sapling a tree which you have to continuously nurture shobha said 6 months once i want to drink and come some people say that uh, their wives does it become a bad habit in their life see it's a very uh, um, you know individual thing there are people <coughs> who want to have a drink once in 6 months or even once in a month have a nice party enjoy with friends come back they don't get misbehave they don't get violent nothing you know which is uh, unwanted happens and they continue like that for years and decades but there are some people who start off this way saying that i am only drinking once in a month or once in 6 months and one fine day there is a threat to the job or there is a fight with the spouse something like that happens and the person realizes that the easiest escape for me is to get drunk and that is when the drinking that is one of the reasons why any of these chemical substance abuse addictions we caution them that it is like the you know signal has turned from green to yellow and you are trying to drive through in full speed by the time you reach the reach the intersection it may turn red and you may have a crash 
So you need to be very careful. Okay? My brother troubles my mother a lot. He shows no respect towards her. So we have no expectations from my brother. However painful it is, I admire and respect Rina's uh, outlook that let me not have an expectation. My brother is an adult. He's grown up. He's got his own family. He's got so many things, uh, uh, you know. I have tried. It's not that I have not tried. As a sibling, I have tried to convince my brother. I have put in all the efforts. But at some point, when I realize that this person is not going to oblige, the more I keep reminding him and telling him, the more he tries to run away from the situation or avoid or tell lies or something, you know, which can be very unwanted. So it takes a lot of courage. But I really admire Rina for having done that. We have no expectations. That sometimes you have to do. But again, I will just add one more rider uh, to that. That have a minimum expectation because after all, he's your sibling. If there's an emergency, for example, if there's a situation that you just cannot tackle and you need him to tackle it, that minimum expectation, keep him as a first aid box. That when I hurt myself, I know that I've got this first aid box and I can get that bandage or whatever, put on the bomb and uh, then I don't turn towards the first aid box for months together. So when you have somebody who is as close as a sibling or someone like that, don't write the person off completely and don't reduce your expectations. Don't say this person will never oblige, so I will never ask him for a favor. Keep it limited to that and hopefully he will, uh, you know, oblige. Yes, Noor says on a positive note, expect more from yourself than from others and you will grow. I 100% agree with uh, uh, no. The more self-reliant you become, the more independent, the more proactive you uh, become, the better uh, uh, it is. Spouse tell him to stop this. They argue that, yes, I take this daily. They threaten their wives. I know that's what it leads to. That is why I caution people against things like alcohol, drug addictions. Any of these chemical substance abuse can have so many complications which people don't realize. Anupama says, can I ask that if standards or minimum expectations are not set in childhood, then does not the problem not go out of hand as an adult? Very true, Anupama. I agree with uh, you. This happens quite often that childhood plays a very important role in what we do as an adult, right? So if today you have a child and you do not set the expectation, you know, you come across children, for example, who are extremely selfish. They will not share a toy. They will not share a chocolate. They will grab anything and everything that they uh, get. Because somewhere their elders, possibly their parents, have given them that feeling that you are our one and only child. You are the prince of the house. We are earning because we want you to have a better uh, life. You are going to inherit all our wealth. Some such you know, indoctrination is going into the child's mind and the child thinks that I'm the most important person in this whole world and I should get whatever I want. Tomorrow, the type of expectation that such a child can have from his spouse, from his you know, colleagues in office, all that will make life miserable. So you're not doing a favor to your child by pampering him like this. You are creating a child who is maladjusted to society when he grows up. You won't be around. You can't do hand holding once he becomes independent, he forms his own relationships and his career. Our role as responsible adults is to empower these children, to enrich their lives, to bring them to a stage where you can launch them off and they can move on to this. So whatever I have been speaking about today, if you can spread this message, starting with children, please be aware that children need to be taught how to balance their needs with others. They need to be taught how to handle if somebody has unreasonable expectations from uh, you. A child can probably have a teacher who's going on badgering and saying, what's wrong with you? You can get 90%. You can get 100%. Why are you not working? And the child is getting more and more frustrated. So teach him that, yes, that is your teacher's expectations for whatever the reason. But you have your own mind. You have your own life. Do whatever best you can but do not get cowed down. Continue that in adulthood as you go along. 
you will learn. It's a continuous process of learning. Every now and then you may be accosted with somebody who has unreasonable expectations, who makes too many demands on you. But the more you keep learning and adjusting, the better life will uh, be. If you continue to do that, you'll have a wonderful life. As of now, let me wish you a wonderful Saturday, a wonderful weekend, and hope to see you again next Saturday at the same time, that is 11 o'clock. Thank you and bye-bye.